Hey you guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I have a couple of new things here that I just picked up from Sephora. I actually had ordered these around the time that I did my last video with all the bronzers. But I had a bit of a shade mishap with one of them. I had to exchange a shade of concealer. So we're gonna be trying them out today. I have a new concealer that we'll be trying. I also have a tiny little super adorable palette that I'm gonna share with you guys today. You know I love an eyeshadow palette always. But this one I think is so cute and really, really, really good quality. So we're gonna try them out today. This is the look that we'll be creating. We'll fill in all the other gaps. It's just some other kind of staples and favorite things that I've been loving lately, including a mini bronzer update that I'll be doing for you guys. So I hope that you are excited about it. Don't we all love trying out new makeup? But before we do, special welcome to anyone that is new here. Happy to have you here at my channel. I hope that you enjoy this video today. If you do, I hope that you'll consider subscribing before you leave. Also make sure that notification bell is turned on. That way you'll be notified every time I upload. And with that, we have a full face of makeup to put on today. So let's get right to it. Let's jump in with some primers. So we're going to do kind of light coverage today because I'm going to be testing out a new concealer. I really want to test the limits of this concealer by doing a lighter coverage foundation. But I want to start with the primer first. Let's see, do you want to do Flower Beauty? Let's go with this one. Let's go with the Tarte Lotion Primer. Just put my sunscreen on like 10 minutes ago. Hopefully it's fully sunken in. Definitely still have kind of that purpley white cast to my skin that my sunscreen gives me for the first little bit after I apply it. I'm gonna take just a little bit more. Add a little bit up here to the center of my forehead. A little more kind of under my eyes and down the center of my face and kind of here up on my temples. I want a really nice glow and I love this primer for the glow that it gives. It's really, really nice. So for my light coverage foundation today, let's go with the MAC Studio Radiance. This stuff is really light coverage, probably one of the lightest coverage foundations that I own. It's kind of growing on me. I mean, this is one of those foundations that I reach for on like no makeup makeup type days or like just really casual kind of I'm just gonna run errands today or kind of hang out around the house and maybe I want my makeup to look kind of nice. But I'm not too worried about covering anything too major. This is one of the ones I've been reaching for a lot this summer. It is a very light coverage foundation though. Almost to the point that I don't even know that I call this a foundation. It's kind of more of like a tinted moisturizer. I know that's not what it's marketed as, but it the coverage is definitely very, very sheer, especially because I do have a lot to cover right now as far as just discoloration on my face. I've got a lot of that going on and this does not really stand a chance at covering that. It just helps even things out a little bit and does cover up a little bit of just the underlying kind of redness that I naturally have in my skin. But as you can see, like I have this little healing blemish right there. It's not really doing anything for that. Not doing much for this thing right here either, but I'm hoping that my concealer will be able to take care of those. And I do like how hydrating this one is. It is really nice and hydrating. I don't know that I call it dewy. Like I don't think it's like a dewy, super luminous foundation in the way that like the Flower Beauty or even the ABH Luminous Foundation is, but it does feel hydrating and very lightweight on my skin. So that was just about two little dollops. I could probably go in with a little bit more, build up a little bit more coverage, but let's try out this concealer. So this again is the Lancome Tante Doll Ultra Wear Concealer. This stuff's been around for a really long time, but I was recently browsing on Sephora's website as I occasionally dangerously do, looking at ratings and reviews, and this seemed to be a pretty high rated concealer. I also noticed that for how much product you get inside this, it's not that bad of a price. I would assume something from Lancome, which I always kind of thought was a bit more on the high of the high end, but maybe that was just kind of my perception because of the French name. Honestly, <laughs> sometimes I, I just kind of assume things without much research or really thought. And sometimes I think it's almost like a defense mechanism to keep me from buying makeup products or just assume things are out of my price range or something that I wouldn't be interested in to keep me from buying them, <laughs> which that defense mechanism seems to be wearing off. It's not working as well as it used to. <laughs> so I'm just kind of dabbing this everywhere. It has a really softly chemical scent. I mean, it's not like fragrancy, like flowery or anything, but it smells a little bit on the chemical-y side. And now I'm gonna dab that in with my, by the way, this is just a clean wet and wild sponge. I bought quite a few of these sponges and I think this is my third one. And I feel like every time I buy them, the texture of the sponge is a little bit different. Like this one's a little bit more slightly gritty feeling than the first one that I had, which initially that I, I didn't think I liked that, but I actually kind of like it now. I don't know. I'm not that picky with my sponges, you guys. Give me a sponge as long as it doesn't fall apart when I wash it one or two times, I probably will get along with it pretty well. Okay, this definitely has good coverage. Look how well it's covering up this very red spot right there. Although I am noticing, so this was like one of the last spots I put the 
concealer on, so it's really set down there. I feel like it's a little bit tricky to blend. So this might be one of those ones, kind of like my Natasha Denona, that you maybe apply in little sections and blend it out more quickly, because it seems like it does kind of set down, which I actually like that. I think that makes for a good sign in a concealer as far as how it wears. By the way, the shade that I got is the shade 250 Bisque. It might be a little bit on the light side. You can see my neck is a little bit tanner than my face right now, but I think this is gonna match me much better as we go into fall and winter, which was kind of what I was shooting for. So we'll just use a little extra bronzer today. I do have a really good bronzer that we'll be using. So really quickly, I just wanna add a tiny bit more concealer to my eyelids. See how this wears. I did put a tiny bit of leftover just from what I was blending with my sponge, but I really wanna give this a test as an eyelid primer. See how it wears under these shadows we'll be using today. And my eyelids could definitely use the coverage right now. They're quite red. We're just adding a little bit of loose powder. Today I'm trying out the Maybelline Fit Me Powder. I've gotten out all my loose powders recently and I'm kind of like rotating through them and testing them all out. So I mentioned that I've been using my RCMA No Color Powder. More recently, I've been dipping back into my Halo Powder from e.l.f., which I think is a really good one. And right now this is the Fit Me In Light, which again is gonna require that I use quite a bit of bronzer because this is a little bit light on me. But that's okay, let's move on to my bronzer. So the one I wanna test out again for you guys is the Makeup by Mario bronzer. When I did my bronzer video, which I kind of feel like that video was kind of a hot mess, my lighting was all over the place because my schedule was all over the place and I haven't quite figured out how to do the nighttime full artificial lighting thing here in my studio. Minor details that maybe you guys don't care about, but I feel like it was hard to test these equally because the situations were so different every day. And I kind of feel like this one didn't get a fair review in that video or a thorough review. I've been using all of them actually over the last two weeks. I think I've had them all for about two weeks now. I'm using them every day. Sometimes I'll even put some on in the morning before I work out just to really test these things out to see which one I prefer. I love all of them, fortunately or unfortunately for you guys. But this one, which I initially thought maybe was kind of at the bottom of the ranking is kind of moving up for reasons that we'll get into as we apply this. So I'm gonna add this to my cheeks today using this brush from Sydney Grace. By the way, that Sydney Grace sale is currently going on right now over on the Sydney Grace website. I think I'm planning to pick up a couple single shadows because I just feel like I need to collect them all now. So I'm gonna take it on this brush, which I think is the foundation brush. It's kind of rounded and dense, a lot like the e.l.f. I think it's a precision brush maybe. The It Cosmetics dual ended brush is very similar to those brushes. Love it for a bronzer. But here's what I'm loving about this bronzer is the shade. It has this like red tone base that just looks so flattering on my cheeks. It's like nicely warm, but slightly blushy. It's just really, really nice. It's very, very creamy. I do think this one's probably not as long wearing as the other two, but just for every day, I love the finish and the color of this one. By the way, I have the shade Light Medium, which is the second shade. And I think there are six shades of this one. But hopefully you guys can see just kind of the rosiness that that gives. Really enjoying this one. I'm actually supposed to film my favorites video in a few days here, and I'm a little uncertain. I really wanted to include one of these in that video because I've really been enjoying all of them this month, but I don't want to include all of them. So hoping that like my thoughts can be finalized in the next couple days, which one of these I'm liking the most, because it seems a little ridiculous to put three cream bronzers in one monthly favorites video. Gonna add what's left kind of onto the side of my nose, a little right here, where we're gonna be putting our blush, just kind of go underneath the blush, and a little bit down my neck. I'm also going a little bit wider because my concealer and foundation were a little bit light in color today. Still feel a little bit pale down the center of my face. Okay, there we have it. Let's add some blush. So I wanna take my Persona Cream Blush in the shade Bubble. Really nice bright pink. Gonna go perfect with my nails. Just on my Alter Ego number four brush. Tap that right, kind of high up on the apples of my cheeks. And now for highlighter, we're gonna take the Say Glowy Super Gel Highlighter. For this one, I'm gonna take my Luxie Highlighter Brush and just kind of work that into just the very tips of the bristles. I like applying this one with the brush. It is very, very intense, but oh, so pretty. By the way, do these, I think these come in maybe more than one shade. I have the shade Star Glow. All right, skin looks gorgeous. Let's move on to what I am the most excited about, you guys. Pat McGrath has a mini eyeshadow palette. I waited on this one for a while. I kind of told myself, 
You don't need to buy another eyeshadow palette, period. Certainly don't need to buy a Pat McGrath mini palette. And I had a feeling that this palette was going to be very, very small. Okay, it is very, very small. So here it is right here. Did you love this little gold envelope packaging? I think it's so cute. So here is the palette. It is very, very small, like very kind of like Polly Pocket sort of, if you will, of makeup. But I think it's so, so incredibly cute. Now, Pat McGrath shadows in general are very pricey. So I knew this was going to be small. I knew the shadow pans were probably going to be on the small side, but I'm still really excited about this. As someone that typically cares a lot about value, there's probably not a lot of bang for your buck with this thing. I think it was $29, but assuming this performs well, which we'll, we'll see, we'll test that out today. I would tend to put this in the same category that I do the Natasha Denona mini palettes. They're really good quality kind of luxury product that isn't gonna set you back a ton of money just on the initial sticker price, which makes them really great gifts. Anyone that's a makeup lover would appreciate, I think, getting anything from Natasha Denona or from Pat McGrath for that matter. So let's take this little thing for a ride today and see how it performs. We're gonna start off in this top shade in the middle. It's the lightest matte shade. We're gonna take my Sydney Grace large blending brush and we're going to pop that just above the crease. Ooh, that's pretty. Oh, I just realized I forgot to do my brows. I usually like to do my brows first, but that's okay. We'll do my brows before I put my mascara on. Okay, that is a beautiful shade. Ooh, I love that. It's like a, a mid-tone brown that has just like a tinge of purple in it. So I wanna swatch these three shimmers really quickly. This one in the corner, this gold, and here at the bottom center, it's kind of taupe color. Okay, so we have like the red-toned kind of purple brown this is a gold oh look at that guys oh that's gonna be gorgeous and then this is like the taupey purple i feel like i just did a taupey purple look although that color is kind of speaking to me or to my nails more for that matter. let me just swatch this purple here in the corner the darker one there are the shimmer swatches they are gorgeous let's just give those a little swipe on the back of my hand hmm Oh yeah, Pat McGrath, she has some really good formulas. Those are really, really nice. Kind of leaning towards this kind of bronzy red one as much as my nails would love to do something different. Why don't we do this? Why don't we do like a combination of these two and then the gold in the center? See how that works out. So I'm gonna start with this one right here. We're gonna run that like just inside the center of the lid. I'm gonna run that towards that outer corner. I haven't put my dark matte shade in my outer corner yet. We'll do that last. So now I'm kind of wondering, what if I do the purple, this purple right here, on the lower lash line? But let's try it. Before I do that though, I wanna add just a little bit of this matte shade we use first. Run that under the lower lash line. It's kind of a base, and then we're gonna put just a touch of that purple right up next to my lashes. Okay, and then just a tiny bit of this right on the tip of that brush. By the way, this is the Sydney Grace Large shader brush okay very pretty and now we're gonna start adding a little bit of depth to this outer corner although i feel like my eyes are that brown is kind of deep but i can't resist trying out this shade right here oh look at that you guys it's like my dream shade ready browns or purpley browns mm, like deep deep rich matte browns they make me so very happy Ooh, that's pretty it does have a fair bit of purple in it which not mad about, it's beautiful. All right, and now I wanna add some brightness to the inner part of the lid. We're gonna take the gold, just clean off my fingers really quickly, just on my pinky finger, and tap that right on that inner corner, and then slowly drag a little bit of that towards the center, kind of overlap that brown. I'm gonna jump back over to my sponge and just very lightly Make sure this outer corner is nice and blended. I don't want it sharp. I just want to make sure that there's, it's like a clean diffused line right there. Okay, so that's gonna do it for the eyes. I'm gonna do a couple of things just off camera because I know this video is getting a little bit long. We're gonna fill in my brows. Today I'm gonna use my Benefit Precisely My Brow, then a little bit of my ABH Brow Freeze. Then I'm gonna add some winged liner. I'm gonna do a black gel liner today. We'll use my Natasha Denona Workin' Set. And then I'm gonna add some mascara and I'm gonna throw on a little corner lash to finish off the look. So I'm gonna do all of those things off camera. Then I'll come back with you guys. We'll finish off with the lips, share a couple final thoughts, and we'll be all done.
And here's the finished look, complete with brows, liner, mascara, and I even have some half lashes here on the outer corner of my eye, which I will be updating you guys very soon on. Gorgeous look. I love this combination of colors, like the browns and golds and that purple, I think is such a pretty combination. Fun little palette. I'm excited to keep playing with this little thing. I know it's tiny, but if you've never tried out a Pat McGrath palette, if you thought her $125 price tag on her larger palettes was a little bit much, I feel like this is a good way to try out her palettes that includes like a full set. So she did have the quads that she has released a lot in the past, but it seems like they always had like maybe just four shimmers in them, or they didn't seem as complete to me. I feel like this is a good like complete everything you would need for any look that you might want to do, whether that be something lighter or something smoky. Also the packaging is really good quality, super, super cute. So if you don't mind spending a little bit more, if you're looking for a fun little gift option for like a birthday, Christmas time, you don't want to spend over 30 bucks. I think this is a really fun idea. I'm excited about this thing. And so far the quality seems just as good as the other Pat McGrath shadows that I have tried. So let's just finish off really quickly with the lips. So I'm just going to take a little bit of, let's go with Oh Snap from ColourPop. Very nice, basic, cooler tone pink. And then let's top that with a little bit of Naked Blush from Flower Beauty. Perfect color. Now let's add a little bit of gloss on top. We're gonna take my Milani Keep It Full Lip Gloss. This thing has had a good long rest in my stash. I think I bought this like a year and a half ago. Most people probably don't keep their lip glosses for a year and a half. Ha, what do you know? It says 18 months on the back. So I'm exactly on target with not throwing this away quite yet. And honestly, I'll probably keep it for another year unless it starts to smell bad. Very pretty gloss though. They're a little pricey for how much product you get, which don't be misled. There is not as much product in here as you would think considering how large the container is, but it is beautiful. So here is the finished look. Actually, let's do a little bit of setting spray. I'm gonna use my L'Oreal Shake and Glow Dew Mist. And that is the finished look. What do you guys think of this one? I think it is super pretty. What do you guys think of this little Pat McGrath kind of Polly Pocket-ish palette? Anyone else intrigued by this thing? If you saw it floating around online or on Sephora's website, or did you think $29 for a tiny little palette that's smaller than the size of my palm? I'm excited to keep playing with it. Can't wait to try out this taupe shade right here. I feel like this taupe is going to be what I was hoping this little palette from Hard Candy would be when I tried this out a couple of videos back. This one just kind of disappointed me. I've tried it out one more time since then and just don't love the looks that come out of this thing. I think they're just a little bit money a little bit gray. I'm hoping that this is gonna be kind of what I was hoping that this palette would be, should be. I mean, I paid almost 10 times more for this palette, so you would hope. As for the concealer, I feel like this did a really good job at covering up some of these really difficult spots that I have. It has really good coverage. It's not overly like drying. I was a little bit nervous when I was swatching this and kind of blending it out. It does have more of a, like a dry down to it. it almost reminded me of like the original Tarte Shape Tape as I was just swatching it, which kind of made me a little bit nervous. But now that I have it on, doesn't feel dry so far, doesn't look dry so far. I don't see it settling anywhere yet. We'll keep an eye on it. I'll keep you guys updated, but so far so good. But that's gonna do it for today. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. I hope that you guys are all doing well. Let me give you one last reminder. Please subscribe to my channel before you leave. Thank you guys again, and I will see all of you in my next video. Bye.